subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 31st of January. Indian Parliament begins budget session amid pandemic. Gunmen kill Christian priest in Pakistan's Peshawar. And Taliban to reopen Afghan public universities, no word on female students. And now for all the details, the budget session of the Indian Parliament began on Monday with President Ramnath Kovind's customary address to the joint sitting of both houses in the capital, New Delhi. President Kovind listed the government's achievements amid the COVID-19 crisis, especially steps to fight the pandemic and to aid farmers and women. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman later tabled the economic survey in the Parliament ahead of the annual budget on Tuesday. India has forecast its economy will grow 8% to 8.5% for the fiscal year starting in April, down from 9.2% projected in the current year. The first leg of the budget session of the Indian Parliament began on Monday in the middle of a high-octane campaign for assembly elections in five states amid COVID-19 pandemic. Addressing the nation ahead of the budget session, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the session will be made as fruitful as possible and urged lawmakers to hold discussions with an open mind to take the country on the path of development. President Ramnath Kovind addressed the joint session of both houses of the parliament where he highlighted government's welfare schemes, asserting that the government is working on schemes to ensure no one sleeps hungry. President Kovind's speech covered a range of issues concerning India's development journey in its 75 years of independence, farmers' issues, the country's COVID-19 vaccination program, defence exports, Afghanistan crisis, among others. कोविड-19 के खिलाफ इस लड़ाई में भारत के सामर्थ का प्रमाण कोविड वैक्सीनेशन प्रोग्राम में नजर आया है। हमने एक साल से भी कम समय में 150 करोड़ से भी ज्यादा वैक्सीन डोज लगाने का रिकॉर्ड पार किया है। आज हम पूरी दुनिया में सबसे ज्यादा वैक्सीन डोज देने वाले आग्रणी देशों में से एक हैं। फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमण लेटर टेबल द इकोनॉमिक सर्वे 2021-22 इन द पार्लियामेंट अहेड ऑफ द एन्युअल बजट ऑन ट्यूसडे। एस पर द रिपोर्ट, इंडिया विल सी अ ग्रोथ ऑफ 8% टू 8.5% फॉर द कमिंग � India's economy has been on the mend after the government lifted mobility measures in June to curb the spread of coronavirus, after contracting 7.3% in the previous fiscal year. But after a surge in Omicron cases early this month, many private economists and the International Monetary Fund has cut growth estimates to 9% from an initial 11% estimate. The finance minister will table her fourth trade union budget on Tuesday with financial statements and tax proposals for fiscal year 2022-23. The focus of the budget is expected to be on further accelerating India's pace of recovery from the pandemic shock. And schools and colleges reopened in India's southern Karnataka state on Monday as authorities have begun easing restrictions amid a decline in fresh COVID-19 infections in recent days. Amid a growing louder call from parents, several other states including Jharkhand, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan are also set to resume physical classes from Tuesday. Schools and colleges reopened in Bengaluru city of India's southern Karnataka state from Monday. While adhering to COVID-19 protocols, as authorities have begun easing restrictions amid a decline in daily infection rate in recent days. Amid a growing louder call from parents, authorities in several other states including Jharkhand, Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Rajasthan are also set to resume physical classes from February 1st. We are maintaining the social distance also and almost all the children are wearing the mask. Even the children are not getting the mask also, we are providing. 
India reported 209,918 new COVID-19 infections in the last 24 hours, taking the active case load to 1.83 million on Monday. Following a sharp drop in cases, authorities in capital New Delhi have also lifted a weekend curfew among other East restrictions. However, health officials have warned against complacency and defying COVID-19 protocols. About 75% of the country's 939 million adult population has received two primary vaccine doses of COVID-19. Health experts have said because of the robust vaccination drive, only 5-10% to of the infected have sought hospitalization, compared with 20-23% during the Delta-driven last wave that peaked in May. And in news from Pakistan, a Christian priest was shot dead and his colleague wounded by unidentified gunmen who opened fire on them as they were returning home from Sunday Mass in Pakistan's Peshawar city. The attack has drawn widespread condemnation. Minority Christians and Hindus have long faced targeted violence and curbs on practicing religion in Pakistan. Gunmen shot dead a Christian priest and wounded his colleague in an ambush in Pakistan's northwestern city of Peshawar on Sunday. Police officer Harun Khan said the attackers opened fire on a car carrying home cleric William Siraj and his colleague Naeem Petrick from their church in Peshawar's Chamkani area. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the shooting. The region has seen a surge of militant attacks in recent days, many of them claimed by Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan or TTP a group which associates itself with the Afghan Taliban. Two padri who are in their worship from the church were killed on the ring road. And from that, one padri who was in the hospital was in the hospital. He was also 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 in the hospital. ये मदीना मार्केट के सामने स्टोर है इसके सामने बंदे खड़े थे उन्होंने फायरिंग की है ताहिर महमूद अशरफी स्पेशल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ पाकिस्तान प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर इंटरफेथ हारमनी कंडेम द शूटिंग ऑन ट्विटर एंड सेड अटैक्स ऑन माइनॉरिटीज विल नॉट बी टॉलरेटेड माइनॉरिटी हिंदूज क्रिश्चन एंड सिख्स हैव लॉन्ग फेस टारगेटेड वायलेंस एंड कर्ब्स ऑन प्रैक्टिसिंग रिलीजन इन पाकिस्तान in 2013, at least 78 people were killed in a suicide attack outside an Anglican church in Peshawar after Sunday Mass. Moving on, locals have lamented Gilgit Baltistan continues to remain neglected as Pakistan government has kept the youths in the region bereft of any job opportunities while failing to bring about any development to attract the private sector. They blame scores of people from other areas are hired while youngsters of Gilgit Baltistan are not selected for government jobs despite being qualified. Despite being the gateway to multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor, Gilgit Baldistan continues to remain neglected with locals lamenting that Pakistan government has kept them bereft of jobs and any development. Residents have pinned the rising rate of unemployment to the government's failure to develop private sector in the illegally occupied region. They said although youths are highly qualified, even the government hires employees from outside the region, leaving many of them deprived of job opportunities. अगर पावर सेक्टर हमारा यहाँ पर काम करे तो लोग आएंगे इंडस्ट्रीज लगाएंगे ये जरूरी नहीं कि हर कोई गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट मुलाजिम बन के अपने जिंदगी गुजारे यहाँ पर प्राइवेट इंडस्ट्री नहीं होने की वजह से भी बेरोजगारी बढ़ रही है तो गिनती पाकिस्तान के आवाम को आज तक जो है भेड़ बकरियों की तरह चराया जा रहा है तो हम चाहते हैं कि गिनती पाकिस्तान के को दाखिले खुद मुख्तारी दी जाए गिनती पाकिस्तान के आवाम को जो है अपने फैसले करने का अख्तियार दिया जाए Meanwhile, prices of LPG gas and firewood are also skyrocketing in Gilgit Baldistan amid an all time high inflation and the harsh cold winter season, making it difficult for the poor to survive. Massive protests have also been held by locals in recent days over an acute shortage of food supply and rampant black marketing, 
but the Pakistan government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to the problems faced by the people in the illegally occupied territory. And Afghanistan's public universities closed since the Taliban seized power in August will reopen in February, the Taliban acting high education minister said on Sunday, without specifying whether female students would be able to return. Afghanistan's acting higher education minister Sheikh Abdul Baki Haqqani told a news conference on Sunday that public universities in the country closed since the Taliban seized power in August will reopen in February. Haqqani said that universities in warmer provinces will reopen from February 2, while those in colder areas would reopen on February 26th. However, he did not specify whether female students would be able to return, nor did he say what arrangements, if any, would be made for female students. Taliban officials in the past have suggested that women could be taught in separate classes. So far, the Taliban government has reopened high schools for boys only in the most part of the country. Some private universities have reopened, but in many cases, female students have not been able to return to class. Western governments have made education for female students a part of their demands as Taliban seek more foreign aid and the unfreezing of overseas assets. The hardline group took over the country on August 15 as foreign forces withdrew. Spitha Gustor Festival is a celebration of peace and prosperity. The two-day annual Buddhist festival was held with limited number of visitors and COVID-19 safety protocols in India's northern Himalayan territory of Ladakh on Sunday. The main attraction of the annual festival were traditional mask dance performances by monks depicting stories of good prevailing over the evil. The annual Spitu Gustor Buddhist festival began with limited number of visitors and COVID-19 safety protocols in India's northern Himalayan territory of Ladakh on Sunday. The two-day monastic festival at the Spitu Monastery saw traditional mass dance performances by monks on the rhythmic beat of musical instruments, depicting stories of good prevailing over the evil. Every year, thousands of visitors used to congregate at the cold desert city to witness the spectacular festival. However, with the pandemic looming large over the country for the past two years, the visitors were barred from the festival and only a handful of locals were seen witnessing the dance performances at the monastery. इस बार स्पितु को जो मनास्ट्री में है और जो जो यहाँ पर दर्शन के लिए आया वो काफी कम लोग हैं कम मात्रे में लोग यहाँ पर आए हुए क्योंकि इस कोविड की वजह से मनास्ट्री से भी एक नोटिस जारी किया हुआ है कि कम मात्रे में आने के और बिल्कुल ही ना आने के लिए बोला गया है लेकिन दर्शन तो साल में एक ही बार होता है तो देखने को मिल रहा है तो थोड़ा बहुत लोग यहाँ पर मार्क्स डांस देखने के लिए आया हुआ है। During the festival, monks wear colorful traditional attires and masks and perform the charm dance, a traditional dance form depicting various idols worshipped by the community. The festival is celebrated on the 28th and 29th days of the 11th month as per the Tibetan lunar calendar for world peace and prosperity, and symbolizes the victory of good over evil. The festival came to a close on Monday. An Indian athlete hailing from eastern Odisha state attempted the most number of knee strikes in three minutes while wearing five kilogram weights on his ankles to enter the Guinness Book of World Records on Sunday. Sachin Behra broke the record of Pakistan's Mohammad Rashid by performing 204 knee strikes. An Indian athlete Sachin Behra attempted the most number of knee strikes in three minutes while wearing 5 kg weights on his ankles to enter the Guinness Book of World Records on Sunday. 20-year-old Sachin Behra broke the record of 178 knee strikes previously held by a Pakistani man by performing 204 knee strikes at a special event organized in India's eastern Bhubaneswar city. It was very good because it was a lot of work. It was a Guinness Book record for the Guinness Book record. कोरोना की वजह से थोड़ा मैं रिकॉर्ड नहीं कर पाया था थोड़ा गाइडलाइन के बाद मैं आज रिकॉर्ड सक्सेसफुली ब्रेक किया हूं द ऑब्जर्वर फॉर द इवेंट सेड द ऑफिशियल्स विल अगेन ऑब्जर्व द अटेम्प्ट इन स्लो मोशन एंड देन द सर्टिफिकेट विल बी फॉर्मली इशूड 
Behera, who hails from Odisha State's Nopara district, is also known as the knee striker of India. He has also won several prizes in sprinting events. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.